Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on this e-bike. Now before I get started I've got a little announcement to make in that a few weeks ago we passed the 1000 subscriber milestone which is absolutely brilliant. Um, thanks to all of you guys who subscribed. Um, that means that I can now get monetized, which means I earn a small amount for every view which can then go straight back into either buying bits for this or new equipment or something to do with the channel. Now also I've decided to set up a Patreon page um, which for those of you who don't know is where I put extra content on and then if you want to it's completely optional you can then subscribe per month to get access to that content so I'll try and do at least a weekly update on the bike um, if I haven't got enough to make a full video on YouTube um, as well as kind of behind the scenes, polls, interactions that kind of thing um, so you can subscribe, it's as little as a pound a month again completely optional but if you want to, I'll put a link in the description and yeah, take it from there really. Uh, I'll make a few posts and see how it goes. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's go on to sorting the brakes out for the e bike. <coughs> So now I've given the lever a bit of a clean, attached it to the bike. This is the bleed port here, which took me a while to find actually. Um, but luckily it takes the same bleed kit which I've got over here um, as the Shimano caliper, so that's fine. Um, as you can see, you've got the oil gauge here. Um, then you've got where the brake line goes in there. And then you've got the sensor here, which is for the um, cutoff, which this doesn't have. So I'm going to have to see whether I can kind of make my own or whether I need to put whole sensors on the edge or quite how I'm going to do that. And then obviously I need to repaint this at some point, but that's only cosmetic. So I've got the end of the brake attached, which is the front brake actually, but it's the only one I've got with an olive on the end. So I'm going to have to use this for testing, then drain the loop and then refill it once I get the rear one. Now you can see here that you've got the metal olive and then an o-ring at the end. However, if you look at the one that came with it, which is the reason I bought this one, you can see it's a slightly different shape and there's no o-ring. So I don't quite know if this is actually going to seal, but we'll find out. Also, the piece that screws in on the end is actually longer on the one that came than on the one I'm about to fit. So we'll see if that's got a problem. But as I say, one way to find out. So I'm going to push the olive in as far as I can. That's as far as it will go in and then start to tighten up this part here, get it started. Now I don't have the correct spanner but this would be mangled a bit so I don't feel too bad doing this. Nice and tight and there is no play in that whatsoever. And this is the fluid I'll be using in the system, it's this green Shimano mineral brake, brake fluid um, and these work on mineral fluid as well so should all be fine. So yeah, as you can see it started to push fluid out the top um, and as of yet there are no leaks around here. You can see the gauge, I don't even see that but it's got a slight green tin which shows it's all filled up. As I say, no leaks so I'll just leave it for a bit kind of under, under pressure and see what happens. Right, so the latest is I've connected up the uh, calipers and I've been bleeding the system, experimenting, and I've got it working. Um, so there's quite a lot of travel. I think that's possibly because the pads are worn down. Don't worry, future me already thought of that. Got some nice fresh pads here, and I'll get some roaches to go along with these as well. Back to you. Uh, but it engages about there, and uh, you know, got your normal braking force, nothing's leaking, so that proves that you can use Shimano olives on these levers. Um, that's the oil gauge, you probably can't see it, but there's definitely oil in there. And uh, yeah, apart from a few cosmetic bits, that's all working. taken both the pads out and apart from not having much left on them <laughs> I, I, I don't know the heat of it actually like melted the metal or something that's like the imprint of the pistons on it so uh, definitely won't be using these right so I've cut the rear brake hose to side and it's important to remember to put this rubber cap and also nut thing on 
before you do all of this else you won't be able to get it on and I've made this little jig which basically is a piece of wood sawn in half with a 5 mil hole uh, which can clamp around the tube and hold it in place in my vise. This just allows me to clamp it without squashing the tube compared to like holding it with pliers like that. And then I have what are called barbs and olives. So this is the barb. And basically what happens is you want to knock it down into the hose. It grips the hose and it just gives a metallic finish which can then go into the brake lever and provide good contact, I guess. And then the olive slides over the barb onto the tube and just holds it all in place. Now once the barb is in, you want to slide the olive over the top, uh, which might take a little bit of persuasion, but you only need it a little bit over just like that. And then we're going to come up to the lever end. Um, now I'm using a sacrificial lever that I had just so I don't damage my actual one. Um, not that you'll damage it, just you'll see why in a minute. And what you want to do is with the barb loosely on, push it in as far as you can the whole assembly and then loosely screw the nut in until it's a similar length in as one that's been correctly done. So once you've got it in as far as you can I'm just going to go ahead and loosen it back up which should be much easier than tightening it. Yeah you can see that's already wanting to come out and then when you pull it out you should see that the olive has been kind of compressed on this middle bit's been pushed in and uh, there's no way of removing that and that's how you know it's been done. Right, that's the back brake done from the lever down to the caliper. There's still a bit of work with the bleeding because it uh, got way too much travel in it, it's a bit spongy. but. That can wait for now because I need to sort out this rear end. Basically the caliper doesn't line up with the disc because I've had to move the wheel out a bit. It's a bit hard to explain but when I was trying to widen this I pushed one out more than the other which is really annoying. Um, so I've had to put like a little spacer to push this side of the wheel back a bit more. Um, so basically means I can't get more than about 160mm rotor on. Um, I'm going to experiment some washers on the other side but I'll keep you updated on that. So I've got to think how to mount this caliper. But yeah, you've got four pistons, four pistons, eight pistons on this bike, which is pretty ridiculous. Now one final thing, I've got a new rotor for the front, because that one's got a bit of oil on it, and also this one looks way cooler. And then just got to replace the pads. Yeah, you can see there is not much material left on there, especially compared to the new ones, and they're a bit mucky, so out with those. And there's what the new pads look like, much more material on there. So that would be perfect. Now one last thing I thought I'd mention is about setting up the lever travel on these. Because um, previously it came down to about halfway before it actually engaged. Uh, which is a bit too much for my liking. So what I've done is i put a zip tie on and mark where it starts. And then where it ends each time. And what you do is you actually take the caliper off. And you deliberately squeeze the brake a little bit without the rotor attached. And what that does is it pushes in the pistons more than they should be, which reduces the distance that they have to travel onto the rotors. Now, normally, pulling the lever without the rotor on is a bad idea because it pushes the pads close together and then you can't get the rotor on. But if you do it just the right amount, it uh, reduces the gap and also reduces the lever travel. So, yeah, there's not really... It's a bit tricky, it's a bit of an art, um, and then if it gets too close and you can't get it on, you then have to kind of spread them apart a bit. But that's a little trick I thought I'd share with you that I found for uh, getting the lever travel all set up if you don't have a specific adjustment on the caliper or lever. And there we have it, that's the brakes pretty much sorted out on this bike. I'll do a few tweaks here and there, but you get the idea. So, if you've enjoyed this video, smash like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.